Okay, so prayer. Um, prayer is a bit like, uh, it, it depends how you frame prayer. Um, but I mean, I often teach cancelling your beliefs and feel the feelings. And we do course, A Course in Miracles as well. And um, I also do 12 Steps. And 12 Steps for me, it's, it's a traditional dualistic prayer. So what is du traditional dualistic prayer? In 12 Steps, there's like little me's praying to God to remove my defect of fear, for example. So that creates the idea of a separate me connecting to a separate power asking for something to be removed uh, but it doesn't in that type of form it's usually uh, it's usually done in the way that the separate me or my ego will still be there afterwards but with a bit less of the ego so I, I call it dualistic prayer <clears throat> um, the cancelling of beliefs for me does that make sense so it's like the ego asks for something to be removed, but it still wants to be alive after a little bit's been removed. Whereas the cancelling of beliefs is like asking for the whole ego to be removed. So it's even though you're asking for a segment of the ego to be deleted, like I, I cancel, uh, cancel my belief in, um, uh, cancel my belief in kidney failure or Parkinson's or. I cancel my belief in scarcity, I'm an infinite being. But because it says I'm an infinite being, it's really saying I'm one with God, or I'm one with the infinite, or I am one with the limitless realm, or I am in the, my truth is the oneness, or the beingness, or the isness, or that infinite nature. So it's like, even though you're, you're letting go of an aspect of the ego, you're also affirming that in by, by saying I'm an infinite being, that your destination is to be one with God. Whereas in a 12-step program or many groups, you'd be just continue praying for bits of you to be removed, but always wanting to remain at the end. You know, like take away a little bit of my fear so I can continue with a bit less fear. Whereas with the infinite being, you're asking for things to be taken away from you, but you're also affirming that you're one one with the infinite you're one with that peace or that stillness or that presence of love and peace that is always here so you're not trying to re-engage your ego afterwards and be back into your head uh, being separate from from the universe so that's the cancelling of belief so you could see it's like a prayer in that way except I would say it's a higher vibration uh, and doesn't um, we were talking a little bit, I uh, was talking with someone a bit earlier about meditation uh, and uh, the difference between meditation and contemplation. The pro you know, I don't like to use the word meditation when, in, in this group because meditation con con has the connotation that you, you're in your ego, you're in your head, and then you do something for 20 minutes to be a bit more peaceful, and then you go back to your head afterwards, you see, and your head is like. So your head decides to do 20 minutes a day, but it still wants to be there for the rest of the day. Whereas some, you know, I mean the highest form to do counseling beliefs or feel the feelings is to learn it in the beginning, but then to apply it throughout the whole day. So counseling belief, no, well, counseling can do throughout the whole day. I mean the observer and feel the feelings you can do throughout the whole day. Like what's witnessing me doing my work? What's witnessing me cooking my food? So that can be done throughout the whole day, or feeling the feelings can be done with cooking, and, and it's a more advanced with working because you're not trying to like you're trying to let things intuitively happen uh, or automatically happen rather than actually going to your head to organize it. So the feel the feelings, I mean, for me is probably um, you could say that at an extremely high vibration if you can do it because. In the beginning, you're actually verbally using things to, um, to try and let things go. Like in a 12-step group, you pray to God to let your fear go, which is it's using, it's, it's kind of using words to try and get to a place beyond words, you see. 
and even the counseling of beliefs you're using words. I counsel my belief in cancer, I'm an infinite being, so you're using words. Or uh, the observer, when you get more advanced at it, like what's observing, you don't use the words any longer. So there's like just, it's actually non-verbal. So they're, you know, just being aware that there's a witnesser or a detached witnesser, not using words to, beginning you, you because your ego is so strong, you're trying to do it mentally. But eventually you realize that you don't need to use the head or thinking to be the witnesser, the observer, the perceiver. You know, that becomes a non-verbal, automatic non-verbal processing throughout the whole day. So you now can disengage from needing the ego to be, the head to be in charge. And also I really love feel the feelings, which is actually not using at all. It's actually right from the very start saying, don't go into your thoughts. Just, you don't even need your thoughts at all for the process. Just keep disidentifying from the thoughts and just allow the energies to be experienced. So it's like even dispensing with prayer or counseling of beliefs or even needing to use the head for anything. We're trying to get you straight into, you could say it's a form of non-verbal prayer. How can I let go of my head not even using my head? So it's very, very powerful if you're able to do it. So, you know, again, it becomes difficult using the word prayer because it will have different meanings for different people. But uh, those are the things, because we're trying to get to access that state which is beyond thinking, you see. So a lot of these things, um, non-dual praying, you could say, gets you to a level of truth so that you experience the non-dual at the end of it. And dualistic prayer, I'm using it tongue-in-cheek, loosely, is like you're praying to God, but you're not really challenging that even the person who's praying needs to go at the end, you see. So it can be a lifelong thing. So even at the age of 90, you're still praying for God, but you still hold that you, as an individual, as an ego, is still real and can't be dispensed with. So... I think that's, does that sort of, yeah.